In the last episode, I said that Bravo could be integrated with every API. And in this episode, I'm going to prove that. You'll learn how to read the documentation so you'll be able to integrate your API to your liking, even if there's no immediate tutorial for your use case. Welcome to the second episode of Build It With Jonas. Here is what we'll be talking about. As a little motivation, we're going to start with why is it important to learn how to read documentation. Then you're going to learn where to find it and how to read it. At the end, it's going to get serious as we'll be implementing some sample requests into Bravo Studio. Why should you bother reading the documentation? Right now, you probably have a concept for your app. So you know which data you're going to need and what you want to do with it. So for example, add a new data set or remove it when it's not needed anymore. In the last episode, you chose a backend tool, which will handle that data. So now it's time to put those two pieces together. The documentation will help you translate that concept into information that's actually going to be used by the app. Let's make an example. Your concept could be, I want to display a list of to-do items. And I want the user to be able to create, update and delete those to-do items. Now we have the concept part. So let's take a look at the backend tool. You'll most likely find the documentation on the API's website. If you found the API through a directory like apilist.fun, you'll see a direct link. And if you have no clue at all, a search engine will help you. Documentations come in different designs, but the content is always similar. Let's have a look. The documentation of Airtable might already look familiar to you, but it could also look something like this or like this. The important information that you're going to need is the authentication or authorization, which validates that you're allowed to receive the data. Then rate limits, which explain how many requests the API can handle. Usually a couple requests per second are no problem. Requests that exceed that limit have to wait before being processed. Let's go back to the sentences we wrote for a concept and see if we can find the endpoints for them. It can already be useful to take a look at the methods to see which request will be the right one. A request can be sent with one of five methods. The get request is used to fetch data, so in our sample that would be displaying the list of to-dos. With the post request you'll be able to create a new record, so for example a new to-do item. Existing requests can be updated with the patch method and delete removes the record of course. In the description you'll find an article which explains those in more detail. But this knowledge will already help us find the correct endpoints. In most cases, we only have one request for post, patch and delete. But in this Airtable example, we have two different methods for get. The reason for that is that they differentiate between what we call a list and a detail. You can see that the difference between the list and the detail request is that the detail request also has an ID. With this ID, you'll be able to tell exactly which record you would like to retrieve. We're going to get back to that when we're inside of Bravo Studio and enter our parameters. Now we're already digging deep into what this documentation is all about. So what else can we find here? These code snippets show sample return values. So this is what Bravo Studio sees when you enter this request URL. If you find a response that features the data that you need, then this is probably going to be the one. Here you will also find which headers you will have to enter in Bravo Studio. This is usually used for authentication. If you've already learned something new about documentations, why don't you consider giving this video a thumbs up? Now let's dig into Bravo. We have now learned how to find the request URLs for our to-do list example. Now let's head over to Bravo to see how to integrate those URLs into our app. Inside of Bravo Studio, head over to the data library and create a new collection. Now choose blank request because we won't be using Airtable. Give it a useful name and hit save. In this new collection, you can now add all the requests necessary for your app. 
Let's try and implement our to-do list example. We're going to start by listing all the to-dos. The name you enter here will be displayed in the list, so make sure you choose a name that makes you find this request easily. Since we want to retrieve data with this request, we're going to keep the get method. For the URL, we're going to enter the URL from our API. We're then going to enter the authentication to our header. Start by entering the key. We're going to add a new request using the plus icon. And this time we're going to choose a post request because this will be the request for adding our to-do items. With the post request, we're going to add the header again with the same authentication because it's still the same API. But this time we're going to add a body. Inside of the body, we're going to add two parameters. The first one will be the user, which this to-do item should be associated with. The second one will be the content of the to-do item. As values for those two parameters, we're going to use variables because we don't know the content yet. The user will enter it. To test if this request is working, we're going to the test values section. Now, as a key, we can add the variable we just created and give it a sample value. Now, when we hit send, the sample values will be used inside of the body for the request. We can now check in our database if this request arrived by seeing if our sample values are now added. The patch request works similar to the post request. We're going to have the same body, but this time we're going to select which record we want to change. That way we can override the values we just created. The delete request will need a specific record ID as well, because you don't want to delete everything at once. In our case, we could also add the record ID to the end of the list request. This would make the list request a detail request, because we only get one record instead of the whole list. We can again test this parameter by adding a record ID to the test values. When we take a look back at our concept sentences, you will find them in the request list here as well. We have displaying all to-do items, creating new ones, updating them, or deleting them. With all the request URLs now added to your data library, you can go ahead and bind those to the Figma files. We have plenty of videos which help you with the binding part for different use cases. If you're interested in the to-do list example we had, I will link something very similar in the description below, where you will go through the whole process from start to finish. Apart from Airtable, which APIs did you already use? Write that down in the comments and also let me know how the documentation was. Don't forget to like this video if you learned something and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. I'll see you on Tuesday for the next episode. Bye.